How you doing? And Dave um, is very good at filleting snakehead. We've done this before. So what do we have here, Dave? So we have a lost voice. Oh. Got a cooler snakeheads. What you see on them is salt. So one reason that salt's on there is because snakeheads are slimy. The salt helps break, break it down. You can do this with eels too, but it's just one technique to break down some of that slime, make them easier to handle. Plus, salt lowers your temperature of your ice, makes your ice colder, and it's better for high quality seafood. So what we've done here, piece of sugar cane. This is a technique from Asia. Oh, well, all right, it's already been done, right? <laughs> the cane got stuck in. Nothing else on the fish's body is, is sharp. So follow me around, we're gonna get cleaning this fish. All right, so come on around, we'll start playing with snakehead. Pulling with it. All right, we have a microphone now, hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, Dave has brought over the snakehead, which he has caked with salt, so that's to cut down on the slime. Um, the last time we filleted the snakehead, it flew off the table because of all the slime, so we have a solution now. So take it away, Dave. Absolutely. So what you can hear me say is this is a piece of sugar cane. Stick it in here to control the fish. Right over into his mouth, into his body cavity. And you hold on to it. Sorry, I lost my voice. Um, you hold on to it this way and control this fish. Another way of doing it is this, this uh, cleaning table I have came with a clamp. So this clamp, a lot of times I'll flip the stick out this way. As you can. As you can see, their teeth will tear your clothes, but anyway. <laughs> so, one way to do it is just like this vertical point. And yesterday, April 1st through October 31st, we'll turn in any invasive species, snakehead, blue cat, flathead, and you can win prizes every month. So, anglers is uh, going give away some of the prizes in July. But it's just the slime. The salt helps break down that slime, helps you get a grip of that fish as well. You can get big bags of salt lots of places, like even a feed store, you can get a 50 pound bag of salt. What I'm saying back there is if you add salt to your ice, it helps drop the temperature of the ice. The salt water freezes at a lower temperature. That actually helps with meat quality. It helps with keeping your fish cold longer, colder longer. Uh, when I fish for oily fish, like bluefish mackerel, and I immediately bleed them by cutting their gills, removes the blood, and then I throw them into a salt brine. So it's like salt water ice. It really breaks, it gets them cold really fast and stops the decomposition process. So it's little things like that. You can really elevate the quality of your heat. We're going to be talking about some of that stuff later. Anyway, back to cleaning the fish. So this fish has its scales. It's right out of water, salted on ice. Um, you can scale it. It's a great tool for doing that. Uh, I'm going to fillet and skin it. But a filleting tool that they actually sell here to anglers, these are fantastic. You can shovel underneath the, the, the scales. I call it a filleting tool, it's a scaling tool. See how easy the scales come off? Also, this little serrated edge, you can use that as well if you're having some trouble. So, why not? I'll, fill it. I'll, I'll go ahead and scale this one. And again, there's no pesky little spikes that are going to jab you on these snake beds. It's just their teeth. So, one thing that people do is, you know, fillet and then skin. It can add a lot of texture to what you're doing cooking. We're going to be grilling tonight. Um, sometimes I will grill less slimy fish with the scales on. They have all these little knuckles, throw it on the grill. People may call that half shell. In them, you're gonna get that skin and it'll crisp up and give you a really good flavor. So you like, we'll see it later. We'll swing on my fair leader that right now and I'm about to be ready to eat. <laughs> so anyway, scales out of the way, right? Now we get into the meat. So personally, I like to start with the knife a little bit upside down or find a little as far as you can where the meat stops, it's the back of the skull. A lot, you get a lot better at it. The muscle memory, you can go quick, but you're not in a hurry. You went fishing, you take care of the meat, take your time, you get it done right. I see a lot of people cleaning fish inside. You're brave, you can't do that at my house, so I do it outside. Um, it's all about controlling the temperature. If it's hot out, do it quickly so that you're keeping that meat temperature down. Like, think through the process a little bit. Everything else you eat is highly important. Keep temperature control and keep things clean. So, what I'm feeling down in here comes up. I'm sorry, the spine, about the spine. And I just use this flay knife and just kind of, so just keep on coming down. And the snake head, the ribs come to about here. So now my knife is actually right across the top of those ribs. Oops. And 
I'm going to unclip it, get a little better control of it. It's always easier. But right here, when I really look at the fish's structure, it's mean across its shoulder here, and then its gut cavity starts. When you see that gut cavity, the ribs are on the outside of that. There's a lot you can do with fish ribs. It's a fattier area. And then also this collar area up in here has a lot of fat and good flavor to it, depending on your taste. With a simple fillet, you're usually avoiding the amount of meat. But what I like to do is, once I get to the back of the ribs, it's also in line with its anal vent right here. I'll push down across the spine and just kind of push down. And just be conscious of where your blade is. A lot of people will leave a tag of skin, flip the fish, and then be able to... Now I can see where I go to maximize how much meat I keep on this fillet. Again, this isn't perfect. If you look at the thickness of that meat, the amount of it for a fish this shape, they're all head and meat, right? So there's one size. Again, if the scales are off this, we can leave the skin on. Crisp it up, holds a lot of flavor, lots of things to do with it. If you're gonna skin it, it's as simple as, one little trick I like to do is cut a little hole here, away from my hand. So that's one way to hold it. Is to get it big enough to put your finger through it. You can kind of control the fillet that way. It also works really well, good for a handle. I'm actually, I was fishing with a commercial fisherman in Bermuda one time for Wahoo. He did that with every single fillet, wrapped string through it, delivered it right to the dock fresh, pulled it up out of the ice just like that. Beautiful skin on Wahoo fillets. So another way to control your fillet. But ultimately, skinning is a pretty simple process. That's where a good flexible fillet knife, a lot of bend to it like that, really comes in handy. It's good and sharp. And that's the whole point of that thin blade. So really it's just a matter of getting down here against the board and just you can kind of pull with your left hand and push with your right. You've got to maximize the amount of meat you're keeping on that fillet. And remember, every single piece of this fish can add to something. So there's your clean fillet. You know, some of this bloodline, that'll have a little more of a, a heavier flavor. So the fish brings different flavors to your, to your table. But explore. You know, the, re the internet, the amount of information that's out there on how we use every component of these fish is really important for these invasive species. These should be the ones you're choosing. These should be the ones you're asking for at the restaurants. I had dinner last night at True Chesapeake Restaurant in Baltimore. They had snake head on the menu, and they had blue catfish. So they're both great. Our entire dinner party tried them all, loved them. And you know, then you got the skin. We're gonna do some uh, little bit of crispy stuff out here with the skin so you can stick around, come by and check it out. Um, well, there it is. So you can see I got the vast majority of the meat off. Um, then I would just flip over and do it on the other side. They say that snakeheads also lend themselves really well to a full fish cooking a bowl. And we're going to do that later today. You're going to see one of these with a cane in its throat, trucked on the grill bowl. At that point, if, you're, you know, if, you, if this is your style, you've got a whole charred fish, slice it up, season it up, it steams itself inside its own skin. Even if people got to do it that way, crack it open and pick away the good meat. Then we've got kind of all the flavors that happen as you steam this fish in its own skin. So, there's lots of different ways. With this fish being distributed throughout Asia, there's tons of creative cooking from all the cultures there. But I highly recommend people looking into because these fish have been utilized for a very long time. They're relatively new to this region, um, but they're out there. And again, from a conservation perspective, our, our event, the Great Chest we have, again, it's 100% free fill. That's a lot of information, um, but we're going to do some, you guys can try it yourself. So we've got a couple other fish that are not clean, so I'm going to step up and check them out and see them. We're also going to be cooking them throughout the day. Uh, Stay so can and we can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dave, for that demonstration. If you guys have questions, want to come up and talk to Dave throughout the day, please do. If you're watching at home, definitely stop by the store. We are going to be cooking a ton of snakehead today. So we're going to have samples for everyone. We have a beer tasting as well and a barbecue food truck. So stick around because for our next video, we are actually going to demonstrate how to fillet another snakehead. But that demonstration is going to be translated into Spanish. So please stick around for that for our uh, Spanish-speaking customers. The next one is for you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you.